Okay, prob probability question. You've got five counters. Three of them have got a number three on them, and then a one and a five. And the important thing here is that you are removing um, the counters from the bag without replacement. So if you've taken out this three, you then can't take it out again. Or if you've taken out this five, you can't take it out again. First of all, um, we're going to, I think, use a tree diagram to show the probability that both of them have a number three on them. So you take out two counters. The first counter could either be a three or not a three. And the probability that the first counter you take is a three is three out of five. So the probability of it not being a three is two out of five. We don't even need the whole tree diagram here. All I'm interested in, interested in is the probability of having a three followed by a three. So the probability that I now get a counter which is a three, and that's the second counter that I take. Well, if I've already taken out a three, that's effectively that one has now gone, the probability of now getting a three is just two out of four. And if I want to work out the probability of getting a three and then a three, all I need to do is multiply together along the branches. So it's just going to be three out of five times two out of four, or two out of four is just one out of two. To multiply the fractions then, three times one is three, five times two is ten, so the probability of getting a three and a three is three out of ten. You might also have that as six out of twenty, that would be equally fine if you didn't cancel at this stage. Next part says, what's the probability that the sum of the numbers on the two counters will be six? And what we now need to think about is the different ways in which that would happen. Okay, so I'm going to look at first counter, second counter. So how could you make it so that the sum is 6. Well, the obvious way of doing that is getting a 3 followed by a 3, and the probability of that happening, we've already worked out, is 3 tenths. So how else could you get the sum of the counters to be 6? Well, you could get a 1 followed by a 5. Now, the probability of getting a 1 is going to be 1 out of 5, multiplied by the probability of getting a 5. Well, if you've already taken out a 1, effectively what's happened then if you take out the 1 the first time, then the probability of getting a 5 then is just 1 out of the remaining 4. So in other words, you would do a fifth times a quarter, which is 1 twentieth. You could also, though, get a 5 followed by a 1. Now again, that's going to be a fifth times a quarter, which is 1 twentieth. And if I want to work out the probability, and there's, no, there's actually no other way of getting a total to be 6. You either get a 3 followed by a 3, or a 1 followed by a 5, or a 5 followed by a 1. And if it's this situation, or this situation, or this situation, we are going to add together 3 tenths, 1 twentieth, and 1 twentieth. So if we add those together, so 3 tenths plus a twentieth, plus another twentieth, well that 3 tenths, remember that was the same as 6 twentieth, so 6 twentieths, 1 twentieth, 1 twentieth, makes a total of 8 twentieths, which is the same as 4 tenths, or two-fifths. Now there's another way that we could have done this second question. We could have used the possibility space diagram where um, here we have the first um, counter that's chosen and down the side we have the second counter. So let's have a think what we could choose for our first counter. Well it could be a one, a three, a three, a three or a five and our second counter would also be a one, a three, a three, a three and a 5. And if you like, I could, or I might call this 3a, 3b, and 3c. So actually, I'm just referring to these counters as that one's a, that one's b, and that's one, that one's c, because they are three different counters. And then here, you've also got 3a, 3b, 3c. Now, the way that we need to fill in the possibility, possibility space diagram is to realize that you can't get a 1 followed by a 1. Neither can you get 3a, 3a, or 3b, 3b, or 3c, 3c or a 5 and a 5, but you can get everything else. So let's have a look at the totals. If you get a 3a and a 1, your total score is 4. This would also be 4, that would be 4, and this would be 6. Here, total score is 4, and then it goes 6, 6, and then 5 and 3 is 8. <coughs> 3 and 1 is 4, 3 and 3 is 6, 3 and 3 is 6, 3 and 5 is 8, 3 and 1 is 4, 3 and 3 is 6, 3 and 3 is 6, 5 and 3 is 8, uh, 5 and 1 is 6, 3 and 5 is 8, 3 and 5 is 8, 3 and 5 is 8. So in other words, there are, well, there would have been 25 different possible outcomes, 
removing these five because these are impossible, there are 20 possible outcomes. So the probability of getting a total score of six is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out of 20. So the same answer as we got here, which again simplifies down to two fifths.